You must know inside in the deepest part of your being that you matter, not just that you matter, but also why. So for me, the foundational base of empowerment, of entrepreneurship, of any kind of engagement, the foundational base of my success, of my well-being, my wholeness, my everything, is knowing who I am and where I come from. In my living room right now is a painting that I've owned now for 30 years. You can Google it. It's called To the Highest Bidder. And it's at the center of my house. And it's at the center of my house because it actually is symbolic of the foundation of not the house, but the foundation for my life. The painting is by Harry Roslin, who was a genre painter, painter in the uh, early 20th, late 19th century. And the painting is over six feet tall, and it, it shows a slave woman on the auction block holding her daughter's hand. And I cannot come in the door, my front door, or I cannot leave without passing that painting. I am reminded of where I come from every day of my life, and I am reminded because I never want to forget it. And in my library, I have a framed list of enslaved African-American people who were held in bondage on various plantations, listed in the ledgers alongside the cows and the horses and the buggies and the other property. And I pass this list every day. And often I stop in front of it and just speak their names out loud and their ages. Jonas, 11 years old, $500. Sarah, 41 years old, $900. Elizabeth, 57, $800. And I force myself to consider the absurdity and the obscenity of prices being affixed to each one should they be placed up for sale. And I sometimes just pause before them with a prayer, particularly before I have to make a big decision about one of my companies or whether I move forward or whether I stay still. It reminds me, speaking those names out loud, not only of where I've come from, but how far I have to go because of them. And it reminds me that I am never alone. It reminds me of what I've come through to get through. And even when I find myself in settings where I am the only black woman still, that kind of singularity, it doesn't make me uncomfortable. And I gotta tell you, it never has made me uncomfortable. One of my favorite teachers is Gary Zukav, who says that authentic power is when you learn to use your personality, which I've done very well. Use your personality to serve the energy of your soul. So you are the bigger soul that has a personality. When you figure out how to take, I have a big personality. It's lovely, it's charming, but it's not me, it's not me. I'm here to do my soul's work, and I use my personality to serve the soul's work. And if, and everybody has a different talent, and the reason we're all so messed up is because you're looking at everybody else's talent and wishing you had some of their talent. All the energy that you spend thinking about, wishing about, being jealous of, envious of anybody else is energy that you're not only putting out is gonna come back to you negatively, but you're taking that away from you. All your energy should be forced on what do I have to offer? What do I have to give? How can I be used in service? Because Dr. King's message of not everybody can be famous, but everybody can be great because greatness is determined by service. And there is not a job in here that you can do that you don't switch the paradigm to service and not make that job more fulfilling. I don't care what the job is. If you say, I'm a singer, I'm a dancer, I'm an artist, I'm a teacher, I'm a nurse, I'm a doctor, I'm a janitor, I'm a, I'm a clerk, I'm a... If you say, if I look at this from, how do I use this in service to something bigger than myself? It no longer becomes a job. It becomes an offering to the world. And that is why you're here. 
And when you can line up with whatever that is, line up with that. And all you have to do is keep asking the question and ask the question in purity, not in when's it gonna come. The reason why I was number one for 25 years is because I figured out early on there is no story anybody has ever heard that somebody else hasn't experienced. Nothing. And I also figured out, um, probably maybe the first or second year, that all pain is the same. That a mother in Somalia feels the same way as a mother in Seattle when she loses her child. And the common denominator in the human experience is our emotions and our feelings. And the more vulnerable and open you are willing to be with your story, the more actual understanding you create with other people and the more powerful you become. People don't think less of you for sharing your story. They think more of you for having the courage to share it. Well, what took me from maybe to a certainty was actually a show I did with the Ku Klux Klan. And that's why everything, this is what I wanted. To, if, if I leave you with nothing else, it's just know this for sure. There is not one thing that has ever happened to you. Not one experience, not one encounter, not one crisis, not one joyful thing that hasn't happened just to make you better and help you rise. Every single thing you're calling in, whether you know it or not, when you figure out that you are calling it in, you actually start meditating or praying or doing or having a spiritual practice, which is the number one thing you need if you want to be successful in the world. You need something that gives back and nourishes you, regardless of what you call that. You need to, you need to fill your cup so that you can be so full, your cup runneth over and you have enough to give to other people. If you don't fill your cup, you end up dried up. You end up tired, exhausted, and don't have enough to give to other people. You end up resentful every time somebody asks you because your cup is empty and now they want some of yours. So your number one job, your number one job is to fill your cup and make yourself whole. That's your job. So it went from calling to, I mean, I was happy to just to be on TV. I've been on TV since I was 19. I met my best friend, Gail. Uh, in Baltimore. I knew that that wasn't my calling being a television reporter. I hated it, she loves it. And I knew, I knew, she, she loves it. I hated it. I always felt out of alignment with myself. But my father was like, girl, don't give up that job. You making $25,000 a year, you 25? Don't give up that job. So I had those voices, but every day I, I was, I was, I wouldn't say agony. I was trying to find how can I be myself, be real, on the air and I always felt like I was pretending and that I was out of alignment and then when they got ready to fire me they were going to fire me but they didn't want to uh, release me from the contract so they thought well let's just pay her out and we can get her to do this talk show thing so they literally put me on the talk show to get me out of the way and the very first day I sat on there interviewing the Carvel ice cream man about his multiple flavors and Benny from all my children remember Benny used to be on All My Children. Those my two first guests. And doing Dialing for Dollars in between. I knew that I had come home to myself. I could not predict that it would turn into what it has, but I knew that I could finally breathe and I was no longer pretending to restrict my feelings. Because I'd go out on stories and I would, I would empathize with people. I'd feel bad for them and that would show up in the work. And then I would, you know, get a little slip from my boss because I had a, you know, really aggressive bad boss so um, I started to feel then oh this is oh this is the job that I want but I didn't know about calling how will you use your personality the energy of your personality to serve that which is your soul's calling I know this for sure any life no matter how fantastic it is how glorious it seems how much attention you receive how much square footage you have any life and every life is enhanced by the sharing and the giving and the opening up of the heart space. Your life gets better when you can find a way to share it with someone else. So what we've done, you can do. The real empowerment comes when every person leaves this room and makes a decision, makes a decision. Maybe that decision is that you will write a check and support some of the wonderful organizations you've heard here today. But the true decision is, 
How will you use yourself? How will you use everything that you have been given to serve that which is greater than yourself? How will you use that to become truly, authentically empowered? What I know is, is that if you do work that you love and work that fulfills you, the rest will come. And that I truly believe that the reason I've been able to be so financially successful is because my focus has never, ever for one minute been money. And the fact that the money has come has really surprised me. I've been just really surprised and delighted and very pleased and in many times overwhelmed by it. But the money has never been the focus. The reason, you know, I think if you know, if you're on the road to success is if you would do your job and not be paid for it. And I would do this job and take on a second job to make ends meet if nobody paid me, just for the opportunity to do it. That's how you know you're doing the right thing. But you can't fix everything. And you can't save every soul. But what can you do? Here and now, I believe, you have to declare war on one of our most dangerous enemies, and that is cynicism. Because when that little creature sinks in, it hooks into you, it'll cloud your clarity, it'll compromise your integrity, it'll lower your standards, it'll choke your empathy, and sooner or later, cynicism shatters your faith. When you hear yourself saying, oh, it doesn't matter what one person says, oh well, so what? It's not gonna make any difference what I do, who cares? When you hear yourself saying that, know that you're on a collision course for our culture. And I understand how it's so easy to become disillusioned, so tempting to allow apathy to set in. Because anxiety is being broadcast on 157 channels 24 hours a day, all night long. And everybody I know is feeling it. But these times, these times are here to let us know that we need to take a stand for our right to have hope. And we need to take a stand with every ounce of wit and courage we can muster. The question is, what are you willing to stand for?